That's why Jesus said to those religious leaders that, remember the story he said to them, listen here, you who are without sin cast the first stone. There were two things he was saying. Number one, you've accused this woman. And those in that culture, you had to participate in the sentence as well, which was killing them. You throw the first stone. Number two, after he said to the, the, the young lady, he said, um, who was caught in the very act of adultery, he said to her, is there none to condemn you? And she said, none, my Lord. She accepted him. He said, go, sin no more. Didn't give her a lecture, didn't go off on a whole tangent. But then he calls the leadership back to him. The guys that had caught her in the sin. And he says these words. It's often he'd written in the sand. You know the story, but very few Christians read the next verse. Jesus calls them back to him and he says, quote, You judge according to your flesh, but I judge no one. That's Jesus talking, but I judge no one. But if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I and my Father are one. Jesus did nothing but that he saw his father do. In other words, that's why he could sit with sinners and be unbiased and unprejudiced. Simply because he never looked at them through the eyes of a fallen man. And I'm evil because you're evil. Because you will judge me if you don't have the spirit of truth and discernment or if it is lacking or he is lacking in your life. Then you will judge me by observation you will judge me by external matters, which is very, very dangerous. Or you will judge me by the hearing of your ears, which is one thing Jesus never did. And any true spiritual man or woman will never do, especially those who claim to be prophetic and apostolic. Now, I was not prepared to go back down to PE. I wanted to find my children. So now I'm seen as rebellious and disobedient and blah, blah. Okay, fine. So now I have to ask this question. The Holy Spirit is, you know, the spirit of truth. And if the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, how is it possible that the entire leadership in the body of Christ that I was affiliated or associated with will not even speak to me because they believed a lie? They weren't interested in evidence. They weren't interested in anything I had to say. All they wanted to do was heal me and find out my sin. And they believed the lie. Now, the reason why I'm harping on it is this. Now, I love these men. I really do. I love Boston Neville. He's a great man of God. I love Peter Diffin. I love Kenneth Mitchell. I love these men. Mark Hodges. He was my Bible college teacher. I love these guys. And I'm not just addressing them only. I'm addressing the entire body of Christ, the leadership. Not everybody, because not everybody falls into the spectrum. There are names that God has given me that I will sit with for my restoration when the time is right. He gave me the names right in the beginning. Now, if you cannot apply discipline, like you should have applied discipline, according to scripture, with Harold and Maud Weitz, the chances are Mick might still be alive, because I would have been able to get to her to pray for her, yeah? to lay my hands on her, to help her with the prophecy I gave her four years before that. And there was one part she left out of that prophecy. In the prophecy, many of you that know Mick, you knew that she was praying that prophecy every day. But there was a part she left out. And in that prophecy, I said, you're not to leave this man's side. Now, let me say this. When leadership in the church, number one, cannot apply discipline, according to scripture, correctly, as the Holy Spirit leads. Because remember, the Bible is full of paradoxes. So you can't just take a scripture and say, so I'm going to apply that to the situation. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit because in the, in the beginning, I said 2 Corinthians chapter 3, there's a ministry of condemnation, which is a satanic ministry, which is based on the letter, and the letter kills. But the Spirit brings life, and it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is absolute liberty, and you will never have to walk around with a veil. Now, what does it mean in the Greek? It means where the Holy Spirit of truth is Lord in the church. Christ is head, Lord, 
over the church. But in the church, Holy Spirit is Lord, and we are to be led by him, because he speaks not of his own, but he speaks only what the Lord allows him and tells him to say. Now, you are unable as gatekeepers. You are disqualified from protecting the city and protecting the people, saved, unsaved alike, and a nation at the end of the day, collectively, if you cannot apply discipline correctly. If you study it the way that it's supposed to be done, that entitles you to bind and loose. To bind means to disallow on the earth will be disallowed in heaven. To, to loose means to allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. That's the authority, delegated authority God gives some of us, the measure of rule. Now, those of you that attack me that are of the false brethren, and I'm not lumping Kenneth or Neville or Mark into that at all. It's another group. You know the measure that I have. You arrived in the spirit. God opened my eyes in my fallen state, in my fallen backslidden state. You know exactly who you are. When God opened my eyes and I saw you, there were two men who had come to assess my mental Health. They never told me that. They came under the pretext of doing a documentary. And I acted mad the whole weekend. And when they were standing in my house, <coughs> where I was residing, I suddenly saw something I'd never seen in, I've seen maybe, oh, maybe twice, I don't know. On one end. Suddenly the whole place filled with light. When we talk about light, I'm talking about lightning light. I'm talking about not the light of the sun or the light of a bulb, the light of of God. It's like fire. It's like lightning. It's white. And suddenly you're in a realm of absolute peace, but a knowing. And I'm looking and I see an angel standing behind the one man. That also has only happened maybe five or six, seven times. Also, again, I'm going to that's my entire 30 something odd years of serving the Lord. And I'll tell you something right now. I see an angel standing behind the one young man. I see another angel standing behind the other young man. And I'm speaking to God and I say to the Lord, I said, Lord, what's going on here that, um, You've got to send an angel to protect these guys. Suddenly, when I ask the question, he opens my eyes and I look to my right and here's this man standing right there in the spirit. Well, I just spun it. I, I, I rebuke the man into another dimension of religion. Now, he's part of this whole crowd. I'm not allowed to mention his name either. There's about four or five of them. I, I can't mention the name. Otherwise, a warrant of arrest will be released and executed. But the fact, <laughs> the fact of the matter is this. I know that I know that I know that I know by the Spirit who is false and who is not. But I speak to the false prophets. You know my measure. You know my measure. And therefore I want you to know that I will deal with you. Yes, I will. Now please don't take this. And now go and run to some magistrate and some lawyer. And go there and confuse the poor thing and then she signs or he signs or they sign some document that's the biggest phony and the biggest lot of rubbish you've ever heard in your life I'm not threatening you I'm telling you by the Spirit of God by the Holy Spirit that you claim to serve we'll see when we face to face we will find out exactly by what power you operate and by what power I operate so I blasphemed apparently the reason why they make that statement is because most Christians don't even know what it means. Now, how is it possible that all the leadership could believe a narrative that was spun by these evil people to destroy me, right? And claim to have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding them. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. So the very first question I want to question the leadership around the world that was associated with me that knew me all of you how is it possible that you would bow your knee to someone that you claim has great authority and great power and yet not one of you has spoken to me how do you make a judgment call like that and call to yourself a leader I will rebuke you wait until I get all of you I love you and I'm not against you and God will not deal with you severely I've, I've prayed for you I really have Hi, people. 
so easy to judge and when you don't know what's going on. The ones that will pay the price, though, are the false prophets and Harold and Lord. And ten, so the guys that aligned themselves with them, that were heavy. The rest, I forgave a long time ago, and I love them. You'll come back, you'll come around. I'll brace you, take you in my arms, just love you. Some of you I'll actually look after. Can't say the same for you, but I'll actually look after some of you. God showed me that many years ago flying around over New York. There's a lot I haven't shared people, but I'm going to open up the taps during this time together. Now, not this session, but unfold it gradually. gradually. It begs a question. I have to find out what spirit is leading the people in the church. If you can believe a lie and say the lie is truth and say the truth is a lie, then I know in relation to the time that we are in right now, the last of the last days, according to thus saith God, okay, from 2012 onwards, we crossed that invisible prophetic line. And the very first thing that Jesus said, and just about every scripture that alludes to this time, the end times, right at the end of the end, speaks of a massive deception that will take place. Even Jesus warned about it. See to it that you be not deceived. And that word deception then means a delusion that no amount of truth, no amount of fact, no amount of evidence will sway them. Right, that's the first thing. I had people repenting yesterday, asking me to forgive them. I sent them a message. I've had people that really attacked me come and repent. I just said, look, I write it. I said, there's nothing for me to forgive you for. I have nothing against anybody in the body of Christ. Nothing, only love. However, I must deal with those that started this war of words that has caused tremendous calamity and catastrophe in the lives of many believers. None of which I, I get the blame for. Now, I'm used to that. Speak on behalf of God. Nobody ever goes and complains to God and shouts at him then they come against me. All right, now. Mr. Lord says, Mr. President, I, you say, who's I? It is I, I am, who sneaks here today. I'm gonna touch your soul. I'm gonna touch you and if you respond to me in the way that I have declared to you, I'll give you victory. But if you don't, if you don't, Mr. President, you will discover that I will invade this land and then I will remove you speedily. Time's up. Tick tock, tick tock. TikTok. Those who have declared themselves lords and said that they would lord it over the people shall not be so. I shall remove you, even in South Africa. I shall remove one speedily. This land is my land, says the Lord. I told you, Mr. Zuma, I told you, if you would not repent and listen to this prophet, I would remove you speedily just as I removed Julius. But you have chosen to ignore my counsel. You have chosen to ignore my rebuke. You have chosen to reject my words. Therefore, you shall find out that my word is true. As we've said, the story really is starting to gather momentum at an extraordinary rate. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as President of the Republic with immediate effect. I speak to the one who must arise and be seated in the highest seat in this nation. You shall declare that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, you who listen to this word, for this word shall be brought to your ears and you shall know who I speak of. And your stand before God will decide and determine the future of this nation, whether you will abide by the word and the spirit that has even been spoken this night, or if you will reject it. And if you will reject it, God says, I will remove you and I shall replace you with another. If I have removed one, I shall remove another one. And if you do not listen, says the Lord, Cyril, if you do not listen, I shall remove you too. But I shall have my way in this nation. 
And if you will obey me, and if you will submit to my word, and if you will do, even as I have spoken this night, says the Lord, I will cause you to become mighty, and I will cause you to strike the bull's eye. And you shall neither go to the left nor to the right, and so there shall be a breakthrough that shall come for this nation, the likes of which it has never ever seen before. So we don't have time to be bickering about who should be president. Uh, who have elected President Ramaphosa, he should be the president. Uh, so all is clear. That's how we move.